Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Crypto Night, the crypto investor channel. I'm Boris, so let's dive in. I'm with Colton today. Hello, Colton. Hey, Boris. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the Crypto Night channel, everyone. Let's dive right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about TimeCoin. Can you give us a little synopsis and a little bit of briefing of what the coin is and what the project is, Boris? Yes. So some people call it the Telegram coin, and we're going to see why. <clears throat> it used to be known as Gram. And uh, TON stands for the Open Network Coin. Uh, it's a decentralized layer one blockchain. And uh, it's very fast because uh, it uses uh, sharding. Uh, it's great to uh, settle payments, especially if you want to send money to somebody else or people sending money to each other, especially small amounts of money. Uh, it's also used to pay for transaction fees on the uh, on the network and uh, also to validate transactions on the blockchain. It's uh, now a proof of stake uh, consensus model that they're using. Uh, it is it is big because, uh, first of all, uh, it's it's very fast. It has all the great things that you can uh, want from a uh, uh, a layer one blockchain. Uh, TON, T-O-N, is the symbol and the native token of the open network. Thank you for that information there, Boris. Can we now kind of change gears and talk about the history and performance of the coin? Yeah. So, Telegram, back in 2018, they created a light paper and a white paper, and they created a project called Gram. And during that... Uh, development they raised a lot of money it was actually uh, in april 2018 it was the second largest token sale of all times they raised 1.7 billion dollars to really make this thing something really big uh, so there were also in addition to this very large sale of uh, of tokens there's also private money, investors coming in, you know, putting in money uh, into the um, into the company. So, uh, at the end, the problem is uh, ICOs. As you know, it's always a problem. Especially they try to do it under uh, U.S. jurisdiction, and of course, the SEC just came down on them like there was no tomorrow. Uh, they got sued by the SEC and uh, eventually uh, they said it's a security. They tried, Telegram tried to fight the SEC in court, but they lost. So in uh, May 2020, the founder, Pavel Durov, we, he's Russian, but nice French. Uh, he is Russian originally. He, he lived in Russia for a long time. And then after a while, uh, not too long ago, a few years ago, he moved to France and eventually got the French citizenship. But he had to basically reimburse all the initial investors. So all that money that got gathered, the $1.7 billion and, and then some more, uh, that was private sales, uh, all that money had been returned to the investors. But what happened is the community was getting pretty big. Now, you have to understand that Telegram is, is very well known in some parts of the world and some other parts of the world, not so well known. Uh, in the US, they're starting to become a little bit more popular, but this is not where they're the most popular. They're more popular probably in Europe and then in Asia and other places. But worldwide, they have 700 million users. So we're talking about a pretty big community. And the project had really been getting traction at that point. So they had to reimburse. But because code had already been developed, things were already in motion. Uh, basically, the community said, you know what? We're going to keep on going. We're going to rename it from the Telegram you know, uh, open network to the open network. So that's why T-O-N, Tone Coin, uh, comes from. And they at least didn't have to rename uh, the coin, they'd have to rename the, the, the project. And they turn into, the project turned into an open source project. So it's very easily accessible on GitHub. 
which is for developers that they can join, they can, uh, you know, do different things. Now, apparently from what is being said right now, uh, they said that technically they could support millions of transactions per second. So very, very fast and that they could have an extremely large audience. We're talking multiple billions of users. It's built for that. So the, the once again, it's one of those blockchains that uses sharding. And we have talked about this before in other projects where basically it's like a highway with multiple lanes. You know, you can get a lot more traffic, a lot more traffic. Uh, they have also uh, the ability to stake and we'll go over this in, uh, in a little bit with validators and, uh, and so on and so forth and nominators. Uh, there are no transaction fee to send tone coins on Telegram app. So it's very quick and also it's very important for adoption because when you have a lot of users using an app like, let's say, WhatsApp or Telegram, and they can easily say, hey, uh, I, I need to reimburse you for uh, yesterday's dinner. You know, yes, it was $20. Okay, can I send it to you on Telegram? Do you have Telegram? Yeah, okay, let me send it to you on Telegram. Boom, one, two clicks and it's done much easier than asking someone like can you give me your wallet address of you know one of your uh, crypto wallets so i can send the money and this and that so i think for small payments and especially small payments between people you know reimbursing each other or you're selling uh, an old computer, uh, you know, and someone comes to pick it up and say, okay, 200 bucks for your old laptop. Okay, uh, let me buy it. Uh, can I pay you on Telegram? You know, this is definitely something where it could be very useful. You know, uh, something where, you know, uh, Facebook totally failed. They tried to develop Libra and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, but also the difference, I think, between Telegram and Facebook is that the Telegram users are much younger than the Facebook users. So Facebook users probably don't care that much about using crypto and all that kind of stuff. And that's probably one of the reasons also why it failed. And also because Facebook was already too big. Government didn't want them to start getting into money as well. But uh, there are already a lot of services and a lot of applications running on uh, the ton chain, you know, so uh, there's some really, uh, really cool things. The open network, uh, it's a decentralized, uh, it's a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. So people can vote, they can do governance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, like I said, it used to be a proof of work and the last tone coin that got minted got minted back in June 2022. And since then, they have switched to the proof of stake consensus mechanism. So they are now a proof of stake. Now, some of the big features that they have that are really interesting, you have tone storage, which is very much like a Dropbox, except that you Dropbox, technically, it's their server. So technically, they could spy on your documents. They could look at your documents. They can decide, you know, to access pretty much everything and anything. Uh, here, Ton Storage does the exact same thing, except that it's fully encrypted and it's uh, distributed on the blockchain. So it's storing on the blockchain. And uh, you also have the private keys, which can secure and make it extremely, extremely secure for storage to have it on the blockchain. They have Ton Proxy, which is pretty much a decentralized type VPN, uh, allows you to remain private, you know, whenever uh, going, accessing different uh, dApps or, you know, browsing uh, or different networks. You have the smart contracts, uh so that's another thing that they have you know they, they pretty much have everything and uh they can use their own virtual machine called the uh, tvm as opposed to evm with ethereum uh they also have ton dns uh, it's a domain name service that uh but it's basically works like a social media handle you know like uh, at 
and then the name of your company or something like this. So they offer this and it's great for wallets or accounts because sometimes, you know, when you have a wallet and you want to tell a friend like, hey, send me, you know, uh, yeah, reimburse me with stable coins. And they're like, okay, give me your address. And your address is very, very long. So of course you don't know it by heart and you have to do a copy paste, all that stuff. It's much easier to use something like Ton DNS where you can basically say, oh yeah, at Boris Crypto, that's my handle, you know, makes it much easier because you always remember your wallet address. So, uh, so some of those are some of the services that they offer, which is nice because it's a little different from some of the other blockchains out there. Um, and then they have some s lots of different apps. One of them that's apparently uh, pretty cool and pretty popular right now is called Stickerface, where it basically creates your own NFT avatar, you know, for you to use on different network and on different games and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> And of course, they do offer uh, different NFT uh, NFT projects. Uh, there are two of them that are apparently popular, which is Ton Cats and Ton Hamsters. The last thing that's also cool is the Ton Wallets. So we have basically two different flavors. We have the custodial wallet services and the non-custodials. So the custodial ones, they're a good choice for user who want a simple solution. That's the thing with using, let's say, Telegram, where you can send money to each other. You never want to store a lot of money on those. It's more like your, 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 your old wallet that had coins in it, you know, that you would carry around to make small payments. Well, that's where you want to do custodial. The non-custodial is a good choice, you know, for people who want to have more control over their assets so that it is a lot more secured and, and all that kind of stuff. On the roadmap, I mean, they have a lot of stuff that they want to improve uh, in the coming year. You know, they, got, they, they already developed a lot of stuff this year that we just went over, you know, the ton payments, proxy, storage, etc. In 2023, they're looking to do Bitcoin and EVM work chains. So that's what they're going to introduce, you know, uh, to the network, so it'll be easier to work with other uh, Ethereum uh, blockchain and the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. Uh, also, they are uh, constantly uh, developing new things. That's the, the, the point of being open source. It makes it very easy for a lot of uh, developers to actually uh, join the, uh, the project. On the tokenomics, uh, the supply of tokens in this, in October 2022, it was 5 billion. And they have an annual inflation rate of 0.6%, which is fairly, fairly low, re very reasonable. The cool thing to note as well is that there were 1.3 million accounts in October 2022. That's a 320% 321% increase in new accounts in just six months. So that's a lot of people joining uh, the, 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 the blockchain in the, in the project. Um, also important to note, back in November 2021, the price quickly jumped from $1 to almost $6. So in a matter of just a, a, a few, few days, week, uh, and of course, that was the whole time high at 584. And then if we look throughout 2022, uh, the price has been more stable than some of the other coins. If I pull up the, the, this is the entire years, you know, like, uh, 2022 up until today, basically. And as you can see, it went down 56% which is better than some of the blockchains that went way, way down, like 90% or 80% or whatever. And you can see that, you know, at the lowest point, pretty much this past year, 87 cents. You know, of course, now they already started recovering at 220, 231. So, uh, but they didn't take a dive as bad as some of the others, you know, because in January last year, they were around $3. So they are almost back at their price. And if we compare that with, let's say, uh, Bitcoin, 
Bitcoin is now above 21,000. But if you look at one year, wow, what a drop, huh? Because a year ago, Bitcoin was at 42,000, exactly a year ago. So it's like half, you know, where it's it's been, you know. So uh, the thing is, and it's still from the whole time, I still down almost 70 percent. Ton is only down 56 percent. So they haven't suffered as much. So the community is expected to keep on growing, especially since they are very close to Telegram, even though they're not part of Telegram anymore. But there are uh, lots of people using Telegram use ton as well. Uh, in January 2022, there were 200,000 active ton wallets. And this number has grown to 600,000 by May. And now at the end of 2022, in the middle of a bear market or right in the bear market, it kept on growing to reach 743,000 uh, wallets, active wallets, people that are actively using their wallets. So that is pretty uh, amazing, those numbers. I cannot imagine what it would do uh, if we were in a bull market, the adoption. Um, so the all time low was 51 cents back in September 21. Uh, and then the whole time high was 526 in uh, November 21. So in just three months, it had basically 10x. And now we're back down to about 230. Market cap, there are 3.2 billion, which by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, but they are ranked currently uh, number 23 so they're really high they're they're right above chain link so really to show you that this is a project that's really really serious and and going places um the uh total supply is 5 billion coins circulating supplies currently is 1.4 billion there is no max supply because like i said it will grow by 0.6 percent but pretty much uh, right now it's supposed to set forever, you know, or as long as the project exists. Thank you for all that information, Boris. I know you kind of already talked a little bit about their future roadmap, but can you talk a little bit about their latest news and possibly a little bit more in depth about the roadmap, Boris? Yes. So lots of development. One of them recently that happened uh, in December was announced that uh, the wallet developer SafePal is going to support uh, the open network. So uh, that's a great partnership allows them the more partnership you do, you know, the, the more adoption you get. I mean, the, the, the better it gets. So uh, so that's one important news. Um, also the tone they, they announced, you know, the, uh, what, what was the tone storage, you know, the launch of tone storage, uh, early, uh, the beginning of, of the year, you know, uh, where it's going to be very, very important, uh, to be able to, uh, offer that storage. But the cool thing about it, it's anybody can become a node on the tone network and get paid, you know, to host files for everybody. So the cool thing about this whole tone storage, you, know, you see Dropbox, they make their money. It's for them. Here, it's an open concept where lots of people can join. Everything is encrypted. So even though you are hosting files for other people, they uh, there is no way you can ever get into those files. There is no way you can ever um, see those files, read them or do anything with them, but you can actually make some money because you can actually say, you know what, I'm going to do some some uh, some storage myself and you'll be rewarded with, uh, you know, people paying for the storage. Remember, an, an important thing is right now, AWS, Amazon Web Services or Microsoft which is Microsoft Azure, make a lot, a lot of money 
hosting uh, hosting everything for people and companies, especially corporations, are spending lots and lots of money every month for storage. What if suddenly it's not Microsoft, it's not Amazon making all those millions or those billions, but it's you and I. It's a lot of people out there that are creating one node, multiple nodes, maybe you have multiple servers, multiple computers that are online, and you get rewarded for having the files available and, and online for others. So I think we're gonna, uh, this is going to be the beginning of a big decentra decentralization decentralization sorry <laughs> decentralization of files and hosting in general and where everybody gets rewarded so i think that's that's going to be pretty uh pretty interesting uh the the and i think it'll be important to keep a close eye on what's going on and the adoption of this uh new technology Thank you for that latest news and development, Boris. Can we now talk about staking? I know you know it's not the best time to put anything on the exchange or anything like that, but do you have any recommendations, tips, or tricks on how to stake TonCoin? Yeah, one thing that's important to note, and uh, some people may go to your Binance or go to you know, uh, your, ex your favorite exchange or crypto.com, and you're gonna be like, but wait, Where's Toncoin? I don't see it. Well, it's not there. Of course it's not there. Because right now, the whole community has decided that they don't really want to be on any major exchange. The only one that you can find Toncoin as a centralized exchange is Qcoin. But besides Qcoin, there are a few little BD exchange that have Toncoin, but that's it. Mainly it's through decentralized exchange because the whole community is like, man, we're trying to fight centralization. We're trying to be decentralized and open source. So why would we go and put our coin on Binance? Now the community may change its mind. And if they do, wow, that may be a major ramp up, you know, price wise, which is definitely, you know, one of the two plays that are important here. One, the fact that the coin is already number 23. But if tomorrow it was to go onto Coinbase and Binance, it may explode and jump to number 10 or something. So that's one thing. Second of all, they offer so much that I think that definitely uh, they have a bright future. And the staking part, you can stake with them very easily. You can either be a validator, but it requires large amount of Toin coin, and you have to have a very strong connection and some pretty good hardware. So most likely, you you, you need to be at the level of a uh, of a uh, a data center, or you can be a nominator, and then you just lend your tokens to validators, you know, in a pool. So that's pretty common. I think most people by now are used to those. So we explain how it works, but basically you have tonevalidators.org and you can just collect wallets and that's how you can stake your coins very safely. But yes, there is no Binance staking. There is no, because you can even buy, you cannot even buy Toncoin on Binance. So, but you put it on pools and they, uh, and they give you, you know, some, uh, some rewards and there are different profit shares, you know, that, uh, that you can do. So, uh, usually it's like 60% of the profits made by the pool for different operations. So it's a little bit more difficult to say what's the exact percentage because it depends on the activity of the pool. And if it has done a lot of different operations on the network. So uh, I couldn't find really, a, there, there's not an easy way to calculate the exact return you're going to get on it. Awesome, Boris. That is pretty cool to think about how they, you know, don't put anything on a centralized exchange. Can we now talk about the price prediction and what people, you know, really want to know? Where do you see, you know, Toncoin in the future? And can you give us a little, you know, uh, a little synopsis on that for us? Sure. So on the different uh, thing we gathered, you know, different pre price prediction, we're looking along the lines of about 
for fifty-five dollars by twenty twenty-four, which also means that basically it's double from where it's sitting at today. So definitely minimum a two x, you know, by next year. Then by twenty twenty-six, uh, we should be along the lines of about ten dollars. Uh, by twenty twenty-eight, we should be along the lines of about twenty-two dollars. And then by uh, 2030, we could be along the lines 40 to $50 uh, on the price uh, of that coin. So 50 would be a 20x from here. For layer one, I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty good play. So um, I, I definitely like the project. You know, uh, I haven't bought any yet, but I'm really looking at it and I may probably buy a few you know just uh because i think they, they have a, a, a definitely a, a bright future in front of them from my side boris that's all i have for today but thank you so much for all the information if you have anything else please feel free to add it that's it thank you everyone thank you colton we look forward to see you on the next kryptonite video i hope this video helps uh thank you for watching have a good day if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and if you like the video at the end, click on the thumbs up.